I'm Paul Gorse from Northwestern University. I'm John Greenies from the University of Warwick. I'm Stefan Schwede from the University of Bonn. I'm Ulrike Tillmann from uh, Oxford. Well, I, we should start with our title, Homotopy Harnessing Higher Structures. Um, the subject of homotopy theory has uh, come, come of age. There have been a lot of developments uh, since uh, we last had a similar program in 2002. Um, and a lot of things have become possible because of these uh, developments. And uh, this program uh, is hoping to harness those developments in various areas. We've got four um, workshops which represent four of the main themes and probably we ought to uh, let uh, the relevant people say something about their, their, their workshop. So Stefan yes, was on so the first one. The first workshop was on higher structures in homotopy theory and this was uh, in a sense laying the groundwork for the methods that are common to all the developments. Um, so this is an area which at least in this form probably didn't exist at the last workshop in 2002. It, it received a huge push through work of uh, Lurie and others on higher category theory. So the first workshop was of an introductory nature. We had tons of young people here, graduate students and young postdocs who learned about the recent developments. We had wonderful lectures. And now we're going to work more seriously with the methods that were presented. And we're in the middle right now of the second workshop, which is uh, equivariant and motivic um, homotopy theory. Um, and this is an example, so we're interested in structures with uh, symmetry, that's the equivariant, and um, uh, things which come from arithmetic um, geometry. I suppose that's the motivic, and applying those methods together, that's, what, that's the theme. So far, it seems to be bringing those two themes quite well together. Uh, the third workshop, I mean, chromatic homotopy theory and derived algebraic geometry, that actually is probably closest to the 2002 program. And link, the link is there. Um, I think what's new is that, well, Mike Hopkins in particular had a whole bunch of interesting examples in this area, which drove the development of derived algebraic geometry in particular. His work with elliptic curves and its applications of the homotopy theory was a basic example that gave an impetus to this whole development of Lurie and his co-workers and opened up a whole realms of new realms of calculation and this workshop will extend that and see what's new and what can be done in, in various new areas. Yeah, and the last workshop is a um, slightly different direction, uh, somewhat more geometric, so it's just called manifolds and uh, um, again, higher structures have uh, recently become uh, more and more important interplay between manifolds, categories, cobordism categories. Um, uh, Lurie's work in a slightly different sense has been uh, playing an important role, but uh, we're going back also to uh, work of uh, Max and Weiss on the, uh, and the cobordism hypothesis uh, and, and classification of that. I want to come back in because I think I made a bad um, account of it. I, I made it sound like uh, the equivariant of Matuic was purely theoretical. I think one of the things which characterizes the difference between 2002 and now is the wonderful things can, people can calculate. I mean, I, I had lots of things which were purely fantasy uh, back then, people can now calculate. Uh, so, in algebraic K theory and, uh, and also in Matuic homotopy theory. Thing. So, I think that's that's a, a big difference and we're really seeing it this week. I think another thing that has, has changed or maybe I should say intensify a lot and that's pretty exciting for me is that we have really lots of connections to neighboring areas in particular in number theory, algebraic geometry, arithmetic algebraic geometry. In 2002 the motivic theme was just the game and this is now an extremely active area. The connections to derived algebraic geometry have been strengthened over the last 50 years. Uh, very much. Uh, topological Hochschild homology has reached out into arithmetic algebraic geometry. People in other areas are talking to us, we're talking to each other, and using learning from each other. I think that's been pretty exciting over the last 15, 20 years.
because there have been loads of different uh, and exciting developments in the last uh, 10 years or so. Uh, and uh, we are certainly, from my point of view, we are just sort of coming to a close of a, a large uh, problem which uh, should um, therefore also um, open up new ways uh, uh, to continue. And uh, so it's an exciting uh, time to take stock and uh, see the way forward. So I think we're going to come back to the mathematics, but I also want to talk about the social aspect of it. I mean, there's a whole, the whole burst of wonderful, strong young people who entered the area uh, at a time where they've, they've, they've changed it over this time, and, and you know, that's that's behind um, the different um, the different perspective, the different landscape we see now. I mean, so uh, we in the unrecorded bit just a moment ago, we, we were talking about the fact that not only are there all sorts of things calculated that uh, could not previously be calculated, which could, we couldn't contemplate calculating, uh, it's now possible to make precise sense of um, you know, philosophical answers to why such and such a thing happens in such and such a way. You can now make a mathematically precise statement about... Um, why that is possible in terms of universal properties of uh, various constructions or functors. Yeah, there's been, I mean, there's the social, that landscape has changed considerably, but so has the intellectual landscape in the last 10 years or so. Um, some of this is driven by the solutions to major conjectures of Carver and Variant 1 or uh, um, Mumford conjecture and manifold theory or this approach to the Gabordism hypothesis. Um, uh, some of it is reintegration of old techniques um, or reinvigoration. Um, if, as they're finding new problems, there's the derived algebraic geometry, the higher category theory is a new language. Um, but I think there's also new questions, questions we didn't even envision 10 years ago. Um, cause, partly because we didn't have the language to formulate them, but partly because of the arrival of this the, the exciting cohort of younger researchers who really had it. To, um, they've asked questions John and I probably wouldn't have thought to ask somehow. And, Absolutely. Uh, and um, watching them work and helping them and uh, being part of that, this thing is really exciting. So I would like to say that because of the development that they have, the new, the new languages, the new strong group of young people, it's a little bit like for an older person like myself, it's a little bit like, like a whole new world has suddenly opened and it's more, it's not particular conjectures that we're pursuing, there are all these possibilities and we have to go out and, and see what's out there and, and, and investigate. I think it's also, I mean the exciting part is that um, some of the uh, methods are quite established but there are new applications and new connections with other areas and I think that is the, the, the challenge is to kind of see where these uh, uh, connections can bring fruitful new results and insights. Uh, and I think that's sort of the yeah, yeah, I mean, so just to pick up on that, so, I mean, the structure of the program, which we described earlier, you know, it's homotopy harnessing higher structures. We began with this uh, underlying mach machinery type workshop. Uh, I mean, the, there is a reason for that structure, is because uh, these methods do apply very broadly. And, and things which have been successful in one area can now be transposed into the other because of this new underlying understanding of higher category theory, for example. Um, so, yeah, it's absolutely intrinsic, what Ulrika says. There's also almost a, a lab science aspect to this. We've, we've done all these amazing calculations and they're almost like experiments, right? And a, a time has arrived, is coming where we're going to have to take a look at this great swath of it and try to, um, what grow higher phenomenon are we seeing? What bigger patterns are we looking at? And I think that's, these charts right here behind the border, an example of exactly this kind of calculation. So I, I, on the subject of these charts, I, I was part of the conversation. Um, Dan Isaacson, the organizer of this workshop, was telling me about this. And you know, he kept saying, I've got so much uh, data it's going to take me a lifetime to understand everything that's yeah. there, which is exactly like yeah. um, uh, the experimental sciences.
actually, I think mathematics is an experimental science, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> and an art. <laughs> and an art, but that's a controversial statement. <laughs> so I hope that wasn't recorded. <laughs> <laughs>